excited about. Um, so my experience at Lapid has been um, currently almost transitioning from the lead self program, which I'm very excited about. Um, so my experience at Lapid has been a great experience. Um, I've been stretched towards limits I didn't know I had. I've found new strength, uh, strength that I didn't know I possessed. So I think that is, that is something invaluable that Lapid has given to me that I cannot, I really cannot get elsewhere. My experience at Camp Malta has been amazing. Um, I, am, I am a nature person and being one with nature has really helped me. Um, I was a bit stressed because of work, but now that we are here, I, I feel so free. I feel so free. Uh, the sessions we've had, the conversation I've had with people, it has really impacted me. So I'm really grateful for the entire experience. I joined the LAPID team because I was eager to change how I viewed life and I really needed to view my, uh, to change my perceptions of uh, certain things. And through the LAPID experience, I've been able to learn to channel my energy to the right places and to, and to be able to uh, execute things on time without procrastination, which I used to do so much before. Uh, uh, through that, I've actually been able to start uh, a business, a detergents business. Uh, yeah, it's currently it's currently in the initial processes, but I'm experimenting through uh, what we've been taught in Lapid, and I'm hoping it's going to be to be a, a good a good one. And for me, the Lapid experience has been very interesting. I came in with not much expectations, but my primary expectation was to be challenged. I love a good challenge. I love something that will push me to be better. And I think I have found that a lot in Lapid. I have found a place where I can grow, I can push myself, I can think about big ideas and ask people what they think about, about it and then grow from there. I have also built a community of people who are like-minded and that's also one of my expectations where people who I can talk to about different issues, even my own personal issues and we can just agree and listen to each other and also the coaching. The coaching has been very amazing for me. You can, uh, coaches like Coach Lenny, you can call him anytime and he will pick up and you can talk and he has been a very instrumental part of, of uh, my experience in Lapid. And yeah, so I've really enjoyed the experience and I think most of my expectations have been met, in fact, um, exceeded. Uh, for the camp, I think my biggest takeaways are, first of all, on the removing your mask, taking off your mask. Uh, we wear so many masks in terms of how we interact with people and we want people to see us in a certain way and yet our authentic selves are even richer than what we are showing. And so I think the Lapid experience and the camp itself, it has just been an amazing time and we have had a lot of fun, like even from the camp. The last night we had a, a what's it called, a fire, a bonfire and it was also very, very exciting. I'm not an outdoors person so much. So for me, seeing people loud and making noise and we in kind of an, in an organized manner, for me that was really, really fun. So yeah, I've enjoyed it so much and I'm so grateful for the Lapid team and the, everyone who organized this thing. It was an amazing experience. Thank you. All right. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's great to see all of you here. I wish we could all at least turn on our cameras so that we're able to see each other as we engage in this interesting conversation. Um, but in the meantime, maybe just to invite us to this session, you're much welcome. And you can take a minute to just say hi. Um, now that we have just a few of us before our people flock in here, we can just say hi and then we start. Um, Lawrence, good evening. How are you doing?
Hi, you can just say hi to us. It will be interesting to also hear you. Um, hi, Audrey. I'm fine. I can see Lawrence on the chat box saying that he's fine. Thank you so much for the feedback. Um, I can as well see Audrey. Um, you're fine. Thank you so much for the feedback. The rest of us, I can see Grace Joan. I can see um, Linda. I can see Maximilian Winfred. How are you doing today? Maybe you can just say hi to us. Uh, as we begin this session. Hi, how are you doing, everyone? This is the only chance you have <laughs> to come to the spotlight in the meantime, before we officially begin the session. Okay, thank you so much, Grace John. I can see your feedback, you're doing well. Asante Sana. Hi, Linda. Jakes, hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you doing? I'm great. Nice to be here. Good to be an interesting talk. Fantastic. Um, thank you so much for the feedback. It's good to hear from you. Um, who else? Who else can I see? At least one more person. Hi, Winfred. Hi, hi, Winfred. Hi. How are you doing? Doing well. Thank you. How uh, are you? I'm fine. Thank you. It's great to see you here and to have and to host you today. I am sure you're looking forward to quite an interesting conversations, right? Yeah, definitely. I'm excited to join and looking forward to learning lots of stuff. Fantastic. Thank you. We'll be starting in a few. Thank um, you. Jennifer, you're welcome. Jennifer, hi, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Maybe you. I'm also doing well. Thank you so much for the feedback. I, it's good to hear from you. Um, I can see feedback from Tab, Tabby from Nairobi, a business person, and um, she's posted some few things on the chat box that we can use. But um, in the meantime, we'll just kick it off. And I'm glad to host you today. My name is Jex. I'm part of the Lapid Leaders community. I myself at Lapid as an operations associate, and I'm looking forward to having a very interesting conversation with each and every one of you. And maybe as we begin, I would like to invite Linda We'll pray for us and then we start. We kick it off. Karibu sana, Linda. Amazing. Um, let's pray. The Lord we can for you this evening. We want to thank you for this amazing opportunity. And we just want to welcome you in this space as we learn, as we grow together. Would you be with us? This is an experiment. Amen. Thank you so much, Linda. Thank you for the prayers. We are grateful. Um, so today we have quite an interesting conversation and we are talking about habits as your superpower. And maybe just to lay a, a brief background of who we are um, and why we are hosting this conversation. Um, I had mentioned about my name, uh, Bing Jigs from Lapid Leaders Africa. And today we uh, will be having a conversation on habits being your superpower. And we are glad and delighted to host two very key and renowned uh, persons in the, in the society and in Kenya and actually outside the, outside the, throughout the, the whole globe. We have Njugush, um, Blessed Njugush, Timothy Kimani in another name, who will be part of us today. And we also are glad to have um, David Sijeni, who is a life coach, and they'll be taking us through the conversation today. But before that, um, maybe just to break the ice, we can hear from two people who they're looking forward to, and then we will. Um, I will go ahead to introduce um, who Lapid is, and then we kick it off. All right, so um, maybe I just give this opportunity to anyone to just share who they're looking forward to, and then we start it off. Anyone in the team? Yes, Damaris, Karibu Sana. Thank you so much, Jake. Uh, my name is uh, Osaro Damaris Kemunto, and um, my expectation from this particular webinar is to probably see how the content will be executed and delivered. Like, I want to hear something I've never, I've never heard of before. 
Yes, that's it. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you so much, Damaris. One more person. This is open to any one of us. Just one more person before we proceed. You can feel free to just raise your hand and I'll call you out. The rest of us, you can as well put it on the chat box. I'll be look, passing by the chat box once in a while to just look at what we are expecting and what we are looking forward to. And also um, share it with our mentors today and our guests today. One more person in this case. Okay, all right. Um, we look forward to engaging more and more um, in the course of, okay, thank you. Go ahead, Omboi Piongo. Good evening. My name is Omboi. Good uh, evening. I'm looking forward to just hearing about it, how habits are superpowers, everything about habits, how to convert them to, you know, making them habits actually, because it's difficult sometimes making good habits, good habits. So yeah, that's it. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much for mentioning that. Um, but it's hard making good habits, good habits. And it's also not easy to drop bad habits because of course at some point in life, we also need to drop those bad habits. But yeah, so um, the host today is Lapid Leaders Africa. And Lapid Leaders Africa is an organization um, that focuses on you as a young individual and the intention is to grow you to be a leader the leader that you envision to become and i believe each and every one of us and that's why we have been pulled into this conversation is um desires to grow the best out of the, out of themselves and they desire to uh, become a better person that they are and um one way of doing that is by developing habits that um, make up the person that you want to become and so at lapid leaders africa we focus on growing that individual, that you, and we desire to develop you as a young leader so that um, you're able to gain the skills, the expertise, the experiences, and um, the attitude that you need to present yourself to be a better person in the society mm -hmm. and in the community. And not just in terms of you presenting yourself, but also making sure that you grow as an individual to be a change maker. So we are glad to host you today as we um, do what we do best, and that is developing leaders and growing you as an individual to become a better version of yourself. And so even as, as you engage in this conversation on your habits are your superpower, it's important to know that indeed you have your superpower. None of the ways to exploit that is by perfecting and um, by growing your habits and growing the right ones that at least you're inclined on the positive other than rather than on the on the negative and today uh, we are here to sharpen each other as uh, one of the saying goes that iron sharpens iron and we look forward to having quite um, a fruitful conversation with each and every one of you but at this point um, maybe just to break the ice a little bit um, I can see our mentors have started joining in but just to break uh, the ice a little bit um, we will take some minutes to um, do a poll and this poll will just help us um, look at where we are and what we're looking forward to in this session and then we'll proceed to um, just invite our speakers who will be speaking to us for some moments. So I will invite Linda who is who will be taking us through the poll and then we'll um, proceed to the next part. You're much welcome Linda. Okay, and maybe as she sets that up, um, you can as well be sharing your expectations. Um, I can see Audrey saying that I am interested to know which kind of habits are my superpower because not all habits are good, of course. Thank you so much for that. Um, so you can as well be putting up your expectation on the chat box as we do this. Linda, karibu sana. Okay, I can see Linda is setting that up for us. Um, but I was sharing what we do at Lapid and 
Um, one of the most interesting thing that is happening at the moment in this season is that we are actually in the process of doing a recruitment for leaders and um, how the LAPID program is normally offered is you get a chance to develop yourself as a leader by, by taking through um, the three very key pillars in the LAPID program. And um, the very first one is called the Lead Self Pillar. And its intention is to grow you as an individual. You normally call it Lead Self after which then we focus on the leader that has developed, the individual leader that has developed and to make them be leaders also in the workplace. And that's how we um, have the next pillar, which is the lead marketplace. And then through the lead marketplace, you get a, a chance to sit with coaches, you get a chance to um, sit with mentors and industry experts who um, have done maybe what you desire to do maybe in the marketplace for quite some time. and. Um, Eventually, once you have grown yourself to be a leader also in the marketplace, then we also give you a chance to explore Africa and even beyond. And that is by the that field of the Lead Africa program, which is um, the lead uh, the Lead Africa uh, pillar. And this gives you a chance to just develop that pan African mindset. And um, eventually, the main goal of all that is to make sure that you become that leader who is all rounded and who is developed and who is able to deal with problems, not just locally, but also um, even globally and able to just um, solve problems, not just within your country, but also outside um, even your own country as well. So we have so much honored to have you here and we actually will invite you at some point to join us at LAPID and we'll be glad to also be have you be part of the community that you have at Lapid Leaders Africa. Um, all right, thank you so much. So um, I can see Sally Njoki saying that I'm, I'm willing to learn which habits can make me stand out and on the toxic habits to become, and work on the topic, toxic habits to become my superpower. Okay, I can as well see Leslie um, saying that she's excited to interact with a celeb. Yes, we have a celeb in the house and we'll be introducing her in a moment. Um, and she'll be uh, he'll be sharing with us his journey um, as a celeb. And he'll also be sharing with us the habits that have made him who he is today. Uh, I know we have had quite interesting conversations from him. He's a comedian, he's a great man. Um, and at, the, at some point we'll also be I'm hearing how he has been able to consistently be the person that he is from the very word go to who he is now many years after and many years in the comedy. Um, he's also someone who has been able to pull to him quite a big um, crowd. So he'll tell us how he has been able to maintain himself and not just to, not to be maybe carried over by, <laughs> by cloud. So he'll also be sharing with us, uh, with us that in a few. But at this point, we are to do a poll. Um, Linda, please confirm that you've been able to set it up so that we um, can take it at this point. Okay. Um, maybe uh, as we do that, we can hear from Grace, Grace, Joan, what are you looking forward to um, through this session? Now that I can see you, as we set that up, um, what are you looking forward to through the session? Um, I think uh, learning how to control my habits. Control really, I don't know if that's the word to use, but yeah, you know, sometimes some habits can just, eh, what is the word? What is the word? Can just go out of control. Yeah. Like you are not able to manage, for instance, procrastination, you know, things like that. So learning how to manage all of that. Yeah. And learn even more beyond that part of what I have come here with. Like learn more. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, um, Grace, Joan. Um, then I can see Rugare is saying that, thank you so much for the opportunity. It's much appreciated. Okay, thank you. So um, maybe um, 
as you proceed, you can put on the chat box where you're catching us live from, uh, because I, I believe that we are scattered across the country. So where are you catching us live from? Some of us maybe are catching us um, right from uh, different countries. I can also see some members in, in this um, room who are not in, in, from the country. So maybe just share with us um, where you're catching us live from. Um, some of us maybe are catching us uh, live from uh, Matatu. Maybe they are going home after work. Others maybe from school. So maybe they are just relaxed or at in their hostel. So maybe you can share with us. Some of us are catching um, this um, webinar live from the office. Others maybe from the couch at home. So you can share with us. And also you can also put on the chat box what you what you maybe what you're looking for to learn. I know some of us maybe are looking for to learn new skills. Others maybe they're looking forward to just pick up important information from this conversation. Others are here to make new connections. And I can see some of us have actually shared even their Instagram and their FB pages on the chat box. Um, others maybe are looking forward to just be in a conversation that helps them to get out of their comfort zone, comfort zone which is very much appreciated. Um, I can see um, an example of Damari saying that um, she's at home in Kajiado County. Um, <laughs> and her brother wants to be part of this, please bring them in. Um, we would also want them to start creating those habits from as early as now, habits that will um, make them grow to be leaders of this world and of this globe. Um, you can as well as you do that, maybe post for us what you're looking forward to learn. And that is um, whether you, um, would also be, want to be part of the LAPID program if, you, if you're not yet. So we also appreciate that um, as we proceed. Um, maybe I can see on the chat box, Kerubo saying that um, you're joining us from your couch at home in Nairobi. Thank you so much. Um, Winfred is following up from University of Bristol in UK. Asante Sana, you're much welcome, Winfred. Um, Rukia is catching us live from Tika school in the villas. I hope it's not as cold uh, at this hour. Um, I can see Faith Mayo um, <laughs> saying that uh, she's joining us from Thika. Thank you so much. Um, Agnes is from Nakuru. And um, she's hoping to learn to stick to good habits as part of her life. Thank you so much. I can see um, Roy is looking for to learning how actually she, she can tap or he can tap <clears throat> into the, the habits that um, they have so that they can um, get their superpower. Thank you so much, Rose. We're looking forward to learn useful habits and, and learn bad habits. That is straight from Lukenya Hills. Okay, I will lastly read the comment from Collins. Um, Collins is from Nakuru, that is Salga, and he's looking forward to learning more on how to manage his habits and how um, they can be his superpower. Okay, thank you so much. Please keep them coming. But in the meantime, um, in the house we have Njugush. And Njugush, please confirm that you can hear us. Kabisa. Uh, <laughs> Karibu sana, Njugush. Shukran, shukran. Um, it's a pleasure to have you. Nashukuru sana. Thank you so much. Yes. So I actually had a question. So as, as I went to set this conversation, um, and before we begin, I had a question for you. Yes, yes. Um, and one is, Know that you, 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 as a mentor of this conversation, what are you looking forward to from us and from this conversation? Um, I'm looking to have one, having fun, two, um, um, uh, just by the matter of engaging, um, yes. uh, to, to, to be able, because at times I realize when I talk is when I realize things I apparently didn't know about myself and things mm -hmm. um, uh, maybe I didn't know because every day we learn. So basically I'm here to learn and to know about Lapid. I thought I was uh, shrubbing, saying Lapid, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but as a, uh, you know, I, I've been watching my tongue whenever I'm seeing the word. Yes, I know it's lapid, but I've been really watching my tongue. So I'm here to learn. Mm. Yes, lapidly. 
Okay, so um, there, there's something interesting I found, I, I realized about you, uh, and that is that you've been to seven primary schools. Yes, yes, that's true. Um, oh, my mother as well. You know, I talk a lot. <laughs> so I actually so, wanted you to start there before we actually now hand it over fully to you. How seven schools? How? Uh, how did that happen? And how has that been like for you? <laughs> uh, amazing. So, um, uh, for me, seven different schools because my dad is a reverend. So he used to be one. Are you seeing me? Are you able to see me? Now we got a video. Yes, he can see you. And we can hear you loud and clear. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. So, um, seven schools because my dad is a reverend. So we used to be. He used to be um, transferred from what can you He used to be transferred from one 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 church to the other. So every time he gets transferred, you get to go with him. So that's why um, I I went to seven different primary schools. It's not that uh, it was because of um, what we call it uh, discipline. Uh, but um, my dad kept being transferred every now and then, and, and, and that's how I ended up in seven different primary schools. Okay, so um, it's interesting uh, that maybe some of those schools, of course, maybe one year here, one year pale. So if you can just share with us just briefly that journey and okay. then we now now hand it over to you officially to take us through the session amazing so um for for me it it was crazy one is because when you 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 know in primary schools that's when you 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 try to see who can be able to beat who um you, you try to see who is the first body that's what they call it so you're transferred so it happened that i wouldn't last in a school more than two um what they call it two terms i used to have a lot of uniforms different uniforms because each and every school is a different uniform so it was crazy experience one primary schools and like high school and unis when you transfer it's the hardest to try and fit in can you fight me and you know primary school is where it was lethal it was crazy like primary school kids don't care. Unaweza omba mtu maembe anakuambia kauka na understand. Like it's it's chaos. Um primary school is a place where people would anakutukana na mama yako and they don't care. You know, it it is so every primary school and 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 then I don't know what was wrong with my father. He was always being transferred to remote areas. <laughs> We've been to Maunaro, we've been to Lolojigo Jimo Didi. And, and all these places you find people, the mindset is quite different. It's quite hard for people, mm. I think, into primary schools in Shags. It's, it's quite rough. Mm. And then I used to be, <laughs> I used to be very small where well, I'm still um, comparing to. But, but bottom line is it was uh, tough, but at the same time, it was really important because in all those different places you go to mm. live with different people being able to see people in different social settings social status and 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 you know and and uh, even when it came to acting the character Njugush came from one of the characters that uh, he was Amze Flani mm. in Mauna so uh, I'd say it shaped me in in many ways more than one okay wow fantastic fantastic um I will hand over the session to you and maybe one of the, the, the questions I had as I was learning that is how you've been able to um, maintain the yeah. jugush that you know throughout all those different spaces. Yeah. Because of course, um, different places means that you have this culture shock um, and there are different experiment, experiences, I mean. So yeah. it's, it, it would be interesting to hear how you've been able to transition from one place to the other, but remain the same person you are. But before that, now that you've talked about um, rapid and lapid, maybe I can yeah. just share just a little bit about lapid leaders Africa. Um, and I will share my personal experience with lapid. So we, I, um, lapid is um, an organization that focuses on developing young leaders, and our intention is to bring leaders together and to grow them so that they're able to become the change makers that we need in the society. Because we know that there is, of course, not a shortage of um, uh, of 
people who bring chaos, but we have a shortage of people who bring solutions. So Lapid comes in to just give like um, a space for young people to develop themselves and eventually become change makers in their society. And I personally have been a, 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 a part of the Lapid program for about two years now. And I joined Lapid as a student. Um, I went through the journey as a student. I was able to sit um, at, the, at, the, at the feet of coaches and mentors and learn um, how I can personally change my mindset from just being a maybe just someone who just um, comes to see um, problems come as it's not quite solved already, but I've learned to be that person who goes into the problems and actually um, solve the problems. Um, and I also had, had a chance to just transition from the student to now being part of the team that is planning such um, webinars and, and, and also part of the team that now delivers the programs. So that is just a brief about Lapid, just to bring you uh, up to speed. Um, but at this point then, I think now that you have that, you're able to just understand what we do and able to move with this conversation. So at this point, I know um, you said for us and I'll hand over the session to you, but just, um, just to mention just briefly is, and, and this is maybe to the bigger team, um, we have heard of the Kenyan committee and how it has shifted from one place and one stage to the other. And Jugush has been one, that one person who has been in the Kenyan committee for quite some time. And he's one of the reasons as to why the industry is actually doing better. So that's why we are so much honored to have him here. Um, because his comic character, <laughs> Uh, it's just so natural and we, we, we so much um, um, appreciate that and your followers actually we follow you because of the natural sensation that you bring to the spaces that you are in the way your sensation just complements your body your natural body um, and um, your biography actually um, confirms that all through your life you've been one of um like one of the biggest entertainer actually let me just put it that way um in, in this world and actually we so much appreciate that so um to the team jugush is here to share us to share with us how some of the habits that he has developed have helped him build the, the lucrative career and um work that he's doing at the moment so you're much welcome jugush we look forward to have to like engaging with you in depth and at this point i'll hand over the session to you then uh, you pick it up from there Karibu sana. Kabla uende hapo umenipaka mafuta. Eh before you go. Niko uh, hapa. How long do I have and and um you nimesikia umenipatia session. Unajua naweza funga hii mkutano. <laughs> so unakubaliwa. Uh, unakubaliwa kufunga mkutano lakini hukubaliwi. So <laughs> I will um will give you um 30 minutes to just share and then we will open the room for about five minutes to hear maybe three two or three questions and um after which then we will um have a, a, another session but basically um this first part will be on why the um creating good habits is important but then later we'll have another session that shows how that then we can create these um good habits so we have about 30 minutes but we'll also get a chance to ask some few questions at the end of okay. the session yes Hi, kabisa kila mtu asimame. No, I'm kidding. Um, hi guys, my name is Timothy Kimani. Uh, Nimepako hapo mafuto mbaka nangakoza kujirealize and I'm um, Timothy Kimani. I'm a trained journalist. I went to Kenya in some mass communication. I did journalism. And uh, na pia, if you have a question, um, I prefer questions sana sana um, so that I don't uh, keep gratifying myself. So uh, if you have a question pale kwa chat, I, I can see it's a very active. Ah, uh, kabisa, kabisa. Hey, muikali, Deb. Nikon Dakas. She's saying she's in Dakas. She's inside. So uh, I think I'll, 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 I'll touch. If I started to talk, that minute might not be enough of, of, of maybe because I've lived. I, I keep saying I've lived, let's say, for example, that year. So being able to tell what happened in my 20 years, in that minute might not be possible. But I'll try and give instances where I've seen habit. Why, why I think habit is important. One, um, my greatest habit uh, has been trying 
to make it. I don't know, it's vague, but that's in the background. So I'll say that, uh, forget about that. So as we go on, I'll, be, uh, I'll explain how trying to make it has been a habit in every situation. So one of the habits I've had for a long time, one, I'm very introverted, I'm so introverted, but I've had a habit where uh, whenever I see someone, um, someone who um, and it's good we keep on the charts uh, so that in the USG on Galesh, maybe I'm logged off. <laughs> um, so one of the habits that I have is Kierere. It's Kierere in the sense that whenever I see someone who seems like it's as an opportunity for me uh, for, for one thing or the other, I always um, raise my hand up. This is the thing. When I was in high school, I remember there's a guy who came to our school. They are from, uh, they were doing um, set books. And when the guy came, um, I know I love acting and, and the guy came and they performed for us. So when they finished performing, um, they asked who could be able to give a vote of thanks. Uh, there are some people who are well, well expressive in terms of speaking English. I was not the best. I was in our high school. Uh, but with habit so in high school the guys came it's none other than uh, what do we call him uh, Kizangila yeah by then Tahiti was the thing and and when they came I was like I saw this an opportunity so when they asked for someone who is going to give a vote of thanks um I was the first one. Actually, I didn't raise my hand. I walked towards the, the, the stage and I didn't know what to say, but I said whatever I said and that was it. And I had like a small joke that I kept um, but stay with me. So this habit of Kierere, so I, 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 I shout and I go in front and I give a lot of thanks, you know, and, and everyone laughs and, and they're like, wow. So what I didn't know is that at that time, uh, there was a teacher called Mr. Muragori. Mr. Muragori had contact to the guys in the theater. Guess who? Uh, Kazungu Matano. The who is the who then was theater. Akina Jalango then was Jicho 4. So I didn't know. So I finished my high school after a long time. So every time the, the teacher kept, uh, the, 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 the teacher in charge of entertainment can tell me, hey, perform for the parents. I didn't have material, but I performed anyway. It was not funny, but they, you know, they could laugh. So that was high school. So when I finished high school, the same teacher gave me contacts of Kazungu Matano. Kazungu Matano, the captain of horse. So I come in outside. I was like, uh, Mamaliza High School, what next? I don't know what to do. So I called Kazungu Matano. Once I flashed him, the numbers in the corner, and then he called me and he said, Where would I flash? But later on, I explained myself and he told me what you do, come to the theater. So that's point number one. So this habit, I didn't know I have it. And I had it way, way, way back in, 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 in Sunday school. But now this habit, um, what I'd say when my life took a turn was from this point. Because after that, the teacher, before he gave me the contact, he told me, uh, before I join um, college, I could go for set books. And if I'm going to go to college, I do mass communication because it's seen I'm good in languages. It, when we are reading the, the set books in class, you know how you read around the class, you are Nasama Lain Bidi, we are in Tatu. My, uh, my, my, my character was mine throughout the book. If it's Dr. Stockman, is Jugush, is Timothy who is reading throughout. So, um uh, 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 when I when I went out, I went and joined a theater and the Kazu Matano can direct and I went. Then later on, I'd joined college. Like eight months later, I joined college. Guess where? Kenya Institute of Mass Communication. Because in my mind, I was very clear. The teacher told me Nafak journalism, but that also I did. So when I went to Kenya Institute of Mass Communication, I loved drama. In fact, before I paid um, my school fees. I went to ask where do the drama club meet? And I was told where they meet. So when I went there, something happened. The first night when you go for Freshers, uh, freshers Night, that's what we call it at uh, Kenya's Romance Communication, instead of those parties people have, our Freshers Night happens, used to happen for drama club. It's called um, 
Um, it's called oh no no what wanna get pale and Jubush Gerrera is always cool rookie a lot even if I would advise drop it I don't think I will ever let go it's a keeper Gerrera <laughs> Kabisa so oh no get a Duncan Jogona um so so um here I am in college the uh, freshers night and we are there something happened i didn't know this school used to have the who is who as alumni we had akina oj akina fred indimuli ninja of mother in law a lot of people used to come celeb so to speak yani watu wanaanga kwa tiga i'm like kwani which club is this is it a cult unajua niliambiwa jichunge nairobi kuna watu wabaya so when we were seated right there we performed and i remember then akina oj akina abel mutua was in the audience kierere yangu i don't know where that came from but i always feel like it's very bad to let an opportunity go so kierere yangu tuko hapo so tunaulizwa for first years what can you be able to do because remember we've not been in this drama club where i come from i didn't we didn't used to have a drama club mimi tuko perform peke yangu because drama club was banned So tukiwa pale uh, we are asked who can perform no one said anything remember I'm very introverted no one said anything but hapa naona Haber Mutua naona OJ OJ ni mweupe i swear he's here in front of me Freddy Ndimuli so we are asked who can perform everyone is mute timid knock knock daddy i'm having a meeting sorry about that um yeah that's that's here <laughs> so which is good maybe i don't know so um this habit of mine from nowhere and when you have a habit i don't know if it's me we have different habits i don't know if it's me but you you feel like before you are about to do that you feel like roho ina dunda sana you know like for example if it's a habit you're in a habit of uh, let's say for example a bad habit of tuseme kukunywa pombe every time you think of kukunywa unachemka unasikia roho ina chemka it you, you feel because it's a habit it's something you, 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 I was looking it up um for, for on the dictionary it's a habit that it's hard to let go you know so the habit that you have you have a habit of a, a let's say for example kwenda gym like for example in a few days you go to gym but when you feel you're going to the gym you want to select the best shots the best vest because i think for me a habit sio kitu ya kujiekelea a habit is something you feel from within so nikiwa pale wameuliza hivyo i'm like team hakuna mtu anaongea you know what i did i didn't have anything to perform nilipiga nduru and then everyone was like what is happening i've never talked in that uh, in, uh, we don't know each other so everyone even the alumni is akina bel motu akina oje they are like what's happening and then i said I remember what we used to do in the inchas we used to have inchas and and and, and where we uh, and there is a uh, incha here and and w- when I did that I said now that's my performance mtu next achukulia from there that was crazy do you know that's where abel mutua first saw me so abel mutua sees me he's like uh oh chama mjinga ni nani but that's very creative but okay then that's it so later on two years later uh, abel the, 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 they started a show called apocalypse news on ktm and it wasn't doing well so they wanted a character ambaye could have made it more spicier we are kupiga nduru miriam hey it was crazy so abel remembered who is that crazy guy because now after that i mean you na nduru then i followed it up well we are acting badu kirere i'm taking some crazy roles and he was like i need someone maybe from kenya so much communication let me call this guy jo hakuna kitu anafanya so he called me and the first day i went to get an nyonga tai nikijua sasa hii ni kazi ya journalism because ni hapa kule news where going there i found out kumbe it's, it's a parody news show that they were starting and i was like no way na nimenyonga tai so the first thing abel told me to nguo back in a vest i can i'll, I'll never i'll never forget that time cuz na shindwa ya pe mtu wasi unajua na sia maserebo kuna mambo mingi but now that you are telling me to remove shirt ni baki na vest kumbe it's a carol he'd seen and kill it and that's the first role i did and to date i think that's the most memorable role i did and from there my life 
took a turn for the best. Again, in the habit of Kierere, the habit of, I just want to do extra. I just want to be extra. So, hapa kule news. See, I found guys who are acting and who are with them. And as I said, I with them. But say we are at na jisifu. But these I've, I've always been Kierere. So Abel gives us lines. Eh? Instead of Kushika Zile lines, I add my own thing. So Abel used to give us lines, utasema hivi, utasema hivi, and then go. So I used to go and add mavitu vitu, add kitu in that content, in that script you're given. And while we are shooting, that's when I told her. kabla ju, maybe Abel aramembe ni sisema. So during shooting, Abel is like, where did you get that? Actually, wachana na ila ni likuambia, sema hiyo. The rest wali kuwatu kama kawaida. Si hivyo ndiyo hivyo tunapati wa dotu naenda. It was so extra. I was so extra. Back I used to tell Abel. Kwa hivyo mtu mwingine, awe nyo mepati hizo lines. Na wakiyongeza hii line, Abel was like, dem, ebu wewe kuja kana na timo, ebu mwambia ibu mwambia. Here, here. So, um, tukaenda until hapa kule news gave birth to Real Houses of Kawangwane. Now, Real Houses of Kawangwane, the show, came from hapa kule news. Now, these two things, when you have a habit of doing something and then you have the ability of doing whatever it is, and then an opportunity comes, I think that's success. Because ukosawa, and, and this thing, this is the thing about habit. When you're used to something, even when uh, at times we think um, we think the habit is, um, is, 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 um, is a waste of time, so to speak. Like, for example, there are some people who have a habit of, of of when we were in college, there are people who had the habit of reading out, um, uh, what do we call it, reading out uh, gazettes. So you take a newspaper and you read out, you assume you are reporting like. It's a good habit, but at that particular time, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't seem like it can do much to you. You know what I'm saying? Well, thank you. I mean, that's a bad habit. So, um. I, at times they don't seem that like like they they give uh, results until and I'll tell you a story about a guy we are with right now he's a very uh, big guy in he's called Sishia he's a very big guy in Citizen Radio he reports uh, uh, what do you call it he reports the uh, uh, football anatangaza na kiswahili fiti sana so the guy had a very heavy accent from uh, Meru but kuna accent kuna kitu tamu sana when you mix meru accent na kiswahili unasikia kiswahili ya maruweru kiswahili ile deep but ni kimeru una karakari inaenda fit so um so the guy is here everyone used to laugh at him so he'd come and he tell you ebushika uh, camera because in terms of we have a lot of cameras we used to have a lot of camera and uh, he'd tell you ebuni record he had the habit of unampata kijiongelesha but tell you what, there's a time everyone we, we went for an internship. When you are going to check this is what to learn internship. But guess what? The guy had to change his classes. Um, when we re, we resumed, he had to change his classes to evening classes because when you are the end, it's intangible, but umeenda umekuambilio kumepata kazi. He had a habit of doing something that really came through. So when we went there, they realized alikuwa na master ripua sana ya kusoma. So ukimpatia script, uh, uh, anasoma piti sana. So that's that's how a habit, and, uh, a habit and, and preparedness, I think for me, it keeps you prepared when it's a good habit. When that time comes, because we also have habits in Guinea, like for example, um, it's, it's a good habit. Like for example, I picked up a habit. Um, I went to the gym. That's a story in Tasema Badai. Uh, but Sahi, watch and you come away together. Where, 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 where? Benefits, career, changing life, long careers. I can see your career. Yeah. So I was saying, so after after Real Houses, um, um, it, it was amazing. Um, until now, I left TV. And then after leaving TV, the reason why I left TV is because Abel Mutu Ali Chujua. Simple. And it's a story that is out there. So when I left TV, here comes to Metoka Inja. And uh, what do we do? To go on social media, I have 14,000 people following me on Instagram. So I, 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 I was sitting at home one day and Celestine told me, my, my wife, then Alikuwa Kagal, told me, you have a lot of scripts, you shoot Nazim to post. 
So to answer the post, and then we saw people are watching, right? So what happened one day? Someone reaches out is like, Niaje, I want you to put my product on your channel, and then when you put my product on your channel, all these I'm talking about are life changing moments in my life. That's why I think it's a habit is a superpower because it's only a superpower that can take me. I know where I've come from. The, the other time we, we we keep looking at each other with my wife and we're like, Mrs. Because you cannot believe it. It's super power. It's crazy. So um, we've left TV and, and now to produce for online. So I get to call my my friends when you buy them. But while you TV, you know, I'm here because they're still relevant. Uh, can you be able to help me and to shoot that in new? But you know, they be relevant. All right. So the guys were like, "Hey, we end up online." By then, uh, online. Doing comedy online was seen as you remember those uh, Kitambo beautiful comedy by uh, vernacular comedies or Mejichora Machok, Akina Mashangi, Kenganis. In the eyes of now the new age comedians, stand up comedians, Nilkuao, like Nilkuao na Choma Soko, that's what they used to say in their WhatsApp groups. And now um, they, they made me Kuna Jamapo Bishan So to shoot, but, but I, I, I saw. One day now, this guy reaches out. He's like, I want you to advertise. They got a 5K. I was like, damn, this is it. If this guy is willing to give 5K, which is the biggest company? Come on, we're going to talk about 5K. As we make, as we go up from 14,000 followers on Instagram to, let's say, a million. My, my, my idea was to a million. So I think we are in two, at 2.3. A million. As we head there, which is that big, um, um, which is that big company that I'd like to work for, I'm to work with. So it's Safaricom. So, Kierere Angu. Kierere Angu. Nikafanya Kun, there's a video I did for, um, it was very calculated. Kama wanaum, wanawake wanakuwa empowered. Ata sisi wanaume tukue empowered. You can check it out. Iko ilikuwa pale KTN by then I think ilikuwa nafanya bado hapa kule ilikuwa ndio tunakuja kuondokea tumeondokea so those were clips zilikuwa zina play one and, and this I got to learn later from the client so when I did I was very intentional on doing the Mpesa Mpesa one and it went through kwa 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 kipindi because you know ordinarily that would be uh, scrapped off because it's advertisement but it was so funny so when I said njugusho uh, ni kamutu kama finyiliwa so ni kasema bati kama wanawake anakuwa empowered wanawake ume tu sisa uliwe kwa Mpesa one it was so funny. So the client saw that. Kierere too from that. Kierere too. Client saw that and he was like, um, he was like, Niaje, um, can you reach out to this guy? And me onavito na fanya online. I'll get could produce. Yeah. By then they, they they thought I was still on the program, so they were like, and as a fanya kitu kwa TV. Nika se unfortunately in talker. So what do you do online? Aya. Kucheki yoka chiki niko sawa. Actually they were like, we want to try out if digital influencing is something that can work. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how I got myself in Safaricom. And if there is um, an engagement that changed my life is Safaricom. Because after Safaricom, it legitimized what we were doing online. So, eh, kampuni na kuja, unona hile kitu napanyaga na Safaricom, tuleza panya, okay, siya tuna hiyo pesa, lakini, and everything changed. Right now, as we speak, those same guys, those same comedians who are like, they cannot do stuff for online, keep calling me. And I always remind them, but I always remind them. So, um, um, no, 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 she, she knows whenever something happens, like for example, in a room, Lazma ni kuwe noted. Usiwa itoka kwa room and iyo ni kitu, Lazma ni kuwe noted ni hapo. Even when you go, let's say for example, now in this case, when you go for brief for client, we are different influencers, I'll always ask a question. It's not necessarily straightforward making sense, but Lazma ikuwe na kakitu that huyo mtu watanikumbuka. And it's to, it works because whenever I mean those briefs, you know when you you you're beef, being briefed by a client, muko influencers wengi. So you are taken as a group. So when you talk, 
client atakuletwa oh and then when you get to working si uko poa kazi unachapa kazi fiti the next time client would a lot of times clients have come not back through the agency because they'll change the, they they might change the agency but they reach out can i get njugush number so we need njugush that's a client speaking and i don't think there's a greater power than a client asking for you not a mtu katikati middleman a client anasema kama njugusha yuko ikitu kuna kitu itakosa and it's my habit of that's my habit i know i know sometimes it might sometimes it doesn't work by the way this is habit sometimes you gonga into sometimes you might come out of is unmannered uh, mannerless <laughs> unmannered uh it might come out as arrogant you know but when it counts it counts for me when it has counted it has counted you know and, and that's a habit i built another habit i picked up when nikimalizia tuingia kwa maswali another habit i picked up is uh, going to the gym yeah so celeste used to pay for a gym and then and in the two days and in the story yeah gym day one day two <laughs> day three i end it. so she said this thing is so hard eh? that was after we had to so i was like let's go ilianza mchezo mchezo so the first day i went i was like yeah hiki tu ni ngumu i feel like dying but the second day she's like hey yeah tumeza eh eh unaweza pita kama amesikia nikimuongelea um so the second day um we went the third day nikaanza kukunywa maji it was a good habit because i used to be a very poor feeder i used to not drink water i used to have a lot of two gonjo to over usaisikia ugonjwa daktari anaenda anapima anasema hakuna kitu lakini you are very sick kizungu zungu unatapika but you are not sick so that was in 28 no 2019 up to date i think i've done i've done it for two years and it's been crazy it's life changing all the habits i've had and i'm talking about they're life changing of course we've had bad habits like for example one of the bad habits i had is kutumia pesa vibaya now pesa imekuja si kutumia vibaya but you think ah kuna watu wako na shida then later on that's a whole different topic all together kwa nini nisaidia watu leta hiyo pesa hiyo mama anataka nini and then at the end of the day you realize there's nothing you've done for yourself you take care of your you 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 you, you let's say for example your neighbor you take care of your family extended cousin anakuja na kwambia gari no kati katika and they are saying i might get it in dubai unaweza ni sponsor nitarudisha they never finish so we also i i also have bad habits and um another bad habit is is i don't know how to 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 say it but it, what i started with saying i'm introverted it's a bad habit um my social battery would be chini sana so nika habit nime realize if i so be social be social but it's a habit of isolation i have a habit of uh, uh, isolation muje isolate sana so um like it's a bad habit like nani eh njugush si tunataka kwenda sijiku abel anaweza nipigia simu and tells me yaje can we go to juja and have some nyama be like i'm not a problem nani go home it's a bad habit because again i might lose out on some chances that are there so to give from asali sorry guys i talk too much um i've been arrogant countless times yes kind of sana get notice never leave any room like for example a good example is wajakoya wajakoya has that habit is <laughs> you'll have to notice the guy and you just never know <clears throat> okay see at him tete ama nini but who knows whichever president comes in and as i'm consider on something so For, for me i think that's how superpower because how is this emoji yako yako na nyakuwa na namba sana but there's just something about him no no watu yako ni wengi hapa financial interest is a problem to many of us yes yes, yes. that was me uh, i have a question how do you manage your finances and the habits you employ to secure yourself if it's personal it's also okay now no it's not personal it's out there um one i had to go because finances is not something that we are taught and also it's a habit you need to keep on with yeah it's a habit you need to create it's a habit you need to create of finances so i had to go to classes uh, there is a picture nili post like i think a month ago i went to classes uh palace autonomy and and to be just be able to know how money works and i was like guy because when we started ilifika place this biashara of atukas we thought it's just online comedy and digital influencing ikafika place <clears throat> companies are paying us they are like hey 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 he pesa we cannot pay to an individual lazima ikwe kampu 
company. And that's how you opened a company. So you opened a company without knowing how it works. Tax to not charge uh, VAT. You know, it's like 16%, 25% in Akuja. So, hapa kuna pesa hiko. Si yako, ni ya gaba, but kuna kuda. Kuna chukua, na mbeseli ni aje. Ah, uh, tuna need to get your fridge, yeah, get your fridge. Eh, uh, una need nini? Kumbe ni pesa ya serikali tuna kula. So, for a while, I've not been lit, uh, literate enough in terms of finances. But with time, and now I can say, niko sawa. Because I never imagined, money works in some funny ways. You could have a company, company kuna doba to home as a director. For me, it never used to make sense. For me, company money is company na ito jibush creative. Company money is my money. So that's a story. It's another, also another very long, but you need to, to seek guidance, whether it's some short courses, there's some short courses. Nowadays, now on Instagram, there's some people who are doing actually reels. Akina just IV, I think she, there's something she's doing of the sort where you can get money literacy. You can Google, if I do go Mutanda, you can Google. Uh-huh. Just a question, I realized I'm introvert. How do you manage it? For me, is uh, um, when it's time to be with people, I be with people, but that's how I manage it. And uh, for me, it's, it's actually worse because everyone will come to me. You want some small talk? Guy, I'm like, guy, go, just go. But uh, I think we, we somehow, somehow, Somehow it, it sorts itself because when you're with your guys, eh, you're very loud. You're watching your words. Um, but again, that's a story for other times. Has anyone ever duplicated your content elsewhere? What did you do? Yeah, it's, it's a tricky part. Then duplicate it live and direct. Come squeeze him, say, and I'm going to make it. 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 So it's hard to do that. To, to be able to uh, to control that. <clears throat> but what I've come to realize is that if you cannot, con- I, I take it, I know it's bad, but I take it to my advantage. There's a time uh, my content in Lipata and um, uh, it, it's, it's, it, I didn't know how to react. Do I go and report to Kekobo? W- what do I do? So I was like, you know what? I'll keep doing. They're actually sorting my distribution. So kuna watu wataona hiyo. Yeah? And there's someone who nta add a fan from that. So when safari come now people come shine, I have added a fan on that. Then tell us has anyone ever okay hapo kwa do I have seen your relationship with Mukuba Bell eh, and it's really but how do you choose acquire friends who can impact you and share the same kind of respect, fun, helpful in terms of career and enterprising. See. All this you have. Yeah? I never knew Abel before I met him. But he's life changing. If it were not for him, I'm always eternally uh, uh, grateful to him. I'm indebted. Why? Because he changed my life. Now, for choosing friends, it's tricky. Kuna watu na kupoteza. You think mukofiti, you know. But what I say is that I keep praying to God to be able to meet with people who are going to. Um, I know I'll sound like our parents, but that's what I do. Every morning when I wake up, I just want to meet with good people. When I'm going to a certain office, let me meet with guys who are going to help me, with guys who are going to be of impact to my life. That's what happens. But, you know, you choose your friends according to who you are. You, you, you attract who you are. That's basically it. You attract. Just look at Kinawajakoya, guys for Nini Kishash. Those guys... He's new somewhere, but the moment you land in that, let's say, for example, okay, we're going to a trip in Naivasha. The moment he lands in Naivasha, he'll be able to pinpoint someone who can be able to tell him where to get the kishash. So I think you attract what you are. I think that's it. Do you share your habit with your close friends? Yes, we share. If we are not helping each other, that's why I think we, 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 we are friends with Akinabe. If you're not helping each other, then why are you friends? If I'm not gaining from you and you're not gaining from me, so to the panaga alahu, you could pick out daku. You know, when the one is shampoo and eat, when the one is in the city, cause Kadogo to Nazafania share, you know, I have a tendency to imagine that I dream what I dream of. EG, I have a dream to go to uh, COP27 and talk to the world leaders of matters climate change. Then I start imagining I'm already in Egypt. This is Rukia, this is it. In for in class six, um, when my parents moved to Wakanda, okay, I have a difficult story. <clears throat> there was a time, a period in Ilibaki class six to eight. And Ilibaki Kwadiangu, because my, my dad, Sasa Wali Bufena, Joy Kamuru. 
So I used to cover 10 kilometers from school. So I used to pray one day. I knew my dad could not afford it. My dad is a rebel. How is he about my scary? Come on, and I caught him in a parada. So one day, uh, my dad comes and uh, he sees me. Na, 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 na toka so I hadn't seen him. 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 So I told him, I had imagined him on a bicycle. Uh, vile ni ngeo tokea mamuiba and then he looked at me was like okay few months later i don't know kama yu ilimgil but few months later i had a bicycle everything i have today i don't have a lot but everything i have like nikiwa mtoi i knew i was going to marry either kamba ama coast as we speak i have a kamba as the mother of my children yeah uh by the way baby came if you know you know so eh uh, <laughs> so kierere niliwaambia kierere yeah maybe kuna mtu atatuma diaper but no that's a joke um so, so if you you dreaming i think that's the best because unless you dream it like right now there's something i'm dreaming it's quite crazy actually i draw <clears throat> so in my dreams i i am we where i come from uh my dad came from um buka buka yake alikuwa squatter so we don't have um konina feel ni kama tuko therapy uh, my dad we don't have a family land so to speak yeah so if let's say for example god forbid you start kwenda sai if i die today i mutanipeleka you know and that's something i'm willing to change and i have a dream of what that land will look like like i have a picture i, I went to draw like a guy who draws eh? nicholet eh hey. that's my career coming out nichore something that would uh, um nichore kitu enye kona hii i can see a dam i can be able to see some ducks now na mzae pale wakicheza na kinatugi i close my eyes and i see it every time i go and see something these dreams are not dreams for una dream it's a dream unaona kitu unaika kwa dream yako like for example i want a driveway na kai una unaileta so i know driveway yangu itakuwaje before i built my house i knew how na itaka so dreams are good rukia sorry keep aiming high or congratulations wait na hiyo story nimwambia isikie tiga actually it's like three weeks <laughs> it's three weeks now jugush mentioned something about consistency now these people tend to give up easily consistent kimani k uh, k main i, I think I, i would not underscore enough how consistency is enough now please niambia time yangu ikiisha um consistency i think for me is everything because also that's a habit you know when you're consistent it's a habit of doing the, that thing again and again in what i do in video sometimes i have a video that's not really funny but i'll still put it up because i need to be consistent because people i, I don't know how about our minds work but people will always come to look for um something so let's say for example leo kuja kwa page yangu pata kuna kitu next week kuja upate kuna kitu you can even unfollow me because nothing is happening but as long as you're consistent and when you're consistent i think you 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 sharpen and you get to know what works and what doesn't work you wish that was that has been experience uh, what has been your experience with trusting people paul um i trust people with a pinch of salt um mtu ushaiangusha chini pu the people you will help most probably and this this how the world works most probably they won't be there when you need them so does that mean you won't trust them <clears throat> no you can trust them trust them with your nipeleke ipale but with a pinch of salt knowing that something might happen all right maybe in their power or without their power if i give you this something i'm expecting you uifikishe pale but i'm not 100% right with a pinch of salt So nataka nikiuliza ili fika nataka nikiuliza hivyo because within you you might decide we pick a bay right at the same time without you inaweza ibiwa so yes nime ku trust but umeniacha wapi so i think for me i've learned i've learned better not to trust people and when i trust you <coughs> I, i trust um very few people not everyone because we, as human beings we want to assume everyone is good everyone is nice but they might be nice but they have their shortcomings ahem uh-huh. and um for kai busy ni mingi for one to yeah, sell one yes yeah maybe we could take that as the last question i can see so many people are keen to interact here 
but can yes. you, for the purpose of time, maybe you can finalize with that. Ah, nice, 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 nice. For one to sell oneself, is it proper for one to master the art of manipulation? Master the development of understanding that is the only blink, uh, blink by Malcolm Gladwell. Test buds of people can help one to know what habits to retain and what habits not to retain. Like you become effortless to any habit. What's your take? What? He nataka another whole hour. But what I'd say is um, <clears throat> manipulation. Well, um, at times we, we get, we take by force. Kuna kitabu mahali kwa bibiria nasema we, we, the kingdom will be by force or something like that. Uh, at times might want that because uneza kuwa mpole but chance nazo siyo mingi. So I don't know very much how 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 far you you have not read the blink, but how far are you willing to go? Uh, that I don't know, but I know some people where when you a shida ukonaya. Like for example, when Abel Mutua gave me a chance to be uh, with him in a car, he was able to shoot. I think I manipulated him because minimum. I was saying it as if. As if it's a bad thing. <clears throat> but yeah, if a chance is there, do all it takes. That's that's what I believe in. I think maybe maybe we could organize for <clears throat> some more of this. I wouldn't mind. But uh, I'm not I'm not able to answer Zote. Um but would you say my own dear musho? Unfortunately, yes, in the musho. Okay. Unfortunately, so, <laughs> okay, sour, sour. <laughs> okay, um, Jukush, maybe you just your final remarks and then uh, I can, uh, we can get ready to welcome David. I know David is also in the house. He's, a, okay. he's an amazing coach. His energy oh. will blow us away. So you can tell us your final remarks on that website. Nice, Mr. Shukran Sana for putting this up. I think if we had more of this, we wouldn't having we would be having the leaders we have. I have Nikonashida. Kwanza when you are mentioned na mimi si tutaonana after five years then you don't want to get there. But I think um what you're doing um if personally had such maybe ningekuwa mbali sana. So thank you so much for having me. But uh, you know we are doing. Let's keep at it. Let's keep. And, and I'm so glad we are talking about habits because habits because it it is and it screams of 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 um uh, consistency. Let be consistent. At times we feel like it's not enough. We feel like I talk in Mali, but we give up when it's already almost happening. So let's keep at it. Let's not give up. And I think something. I I think this is what I have anyway to young. What I'll say is um, what we have is time. So let's keep doing it. We have a lot of time and uh, let's get the best habits. Cannot wait to hear what Devi has to say, Asante. Amazing, amazing. I'm sure we have all grabbed one or two or very many things from that. And at this juncture, I just want to also anchor what Lapid Leader does. And back to you, Jake, you mentioned it in the program. I have a few questions for you because I feel people don't know you here. So, Jake, which campus uh, did you go to and where did you join Lapid? All right. Okay. Thank you, um, Linda. I went to Mary University of Science and Technology and I pursued economics, Bachelor of Science and Economics. Um, and graduated in the year 2021. 2021, okay, not so far uh, behind. I'm just yeah. curious, why did you join Lapid? Wow, um, I joined Lapid at a time whereby we had closed schools, so because of COVID. So I was one, just idle at home, but then two, I was uncomfortable with the idleness. So it's like, I need to just hear something that I hear when I'm in school that I'm not getting from this, just staying at home thing. And I tried business. I did business for some time and then I realized, no, this is not enough. So I had to figure out something else. And that's how, um, as I was scrolling on Facebook, I came across a post that had been done by one of my friends. And um, it had a lot of VUCA things, VUCA world, the, how the world is changing. And I was like, okay, I don't get this. So I reached out to them and that's when they told me more about the VUCA thing and then introduced me to Lapid and I applied. Um, so yeah. 
Wow, okay, that's interesting. And how does the program work exactly, even after you joined LabBeat? So, um, wow, okay, thank you for that question. Uh, basically, um, and I believe you, you're asking about now how the program is ad administered from my experience. Yes. Okay, so uh, once I joined in, okay, I went through um, a recruitment process and how that looks like is the one applying into the program. And then number two is being invited to attend an information session um, where basically we get to um, hear more about what the program is about and what is it in for me. So I attended, um, I, I did the application, I was invited for an, um, an information session which I attended and then that one qualified me to proceed to the next phase which is the interview. So I was invited for an online interview. Remember it was still COVID time. So I was still back in Shags at my grassroots because of lockdown. So um, I was invited for an interview. I did an online interview and um, fortunately I was taken into the program. Amazing, um, that's really great. What are the key three things you took out from the program? One, I realized that I was not a leader enough. I had much more to learn, especially from the community of the people that I found. Um, and that is all round um, from the people that you are in the same session uh, sessions and the classes with, and also from the mentors and the coaches that I found at Lapid. So I realized that I had more to learn about myself. Um, and that is basically being able to control myself and lead myself so that I can be a leader to other people. But also, and had, I had mentioned this at some point um, that I learned to also ask myself, what do I bring on the table? Because initially I was approaching life from the point of what do I get? And how do I get? And how do I get? But I was able to learn what I also bring is more important than actually what I get. Um, at the same time, I realized that there is something in me that needs to be outpoured out to the world, and I learned to report to the world to, with not with the question of um, how do I become alive, but with the question of what can I do because that is where life comes from. So I report to the world these days not from a point of um, what can I do for the world, but doing what I know and what I do best, and eventually the world is impacted. Well, just as Njukush has just said, you know, we're trying to bring forth leaders who are just everything you have described and more. And I welcome you now to invite David, because I know he's eager to share more. Thanks. All right. Thank you so much, Linda, for that. Um, I appreciate it. And maybe just to take us back to the conversation we had earlier, um, Jugush has really taken time to get, get us to learn more about why habits are important. And <clears throat> through his journey, we've been able to pick up why we should create these habits. And as we proceed to the next session, this session is to now help us build those habits. So like we have learned about why they are important. So David Sijin will be taking us through a conversation on how now do we develop these habits. And just maybe to introduce David to us, um, David is a, a life coach and he is he finds fulfillment in making sure that people live abundantly. So um, he's a global coach on abundant living. He's certified and accredited by international organization. And his passion is drawn from people getting out of their comfort zones. And even as you engage in the conversation today is to develop those habits and to drop those habits that um, we need to develop and drop so that we can become um, better leaders and get out of our comfort zones. So he is driven a lot by leading young people into a personal success that is replicable. So not just um, develop, the leaders, but also make sure that the leaders develop also develop other leaders. Um, he's driven by the, the fact that many people are living beyond their potential, and he focuses on bringing to those um to the to the four habits or the habits that and the practices that someone has created initially that hinder success in individuals and organizations and help them develop a processes and behavioral changes that now drive them to becoming change makers. He believes in individual transformation. So this is not just about us, but about me as an individual and at the core and the foundation of the society and organization change. So he's not just focused on you as an individual, but also the space that you are in. So today he is currently um, working with and coaching a leadership team um, called Andela from Uganda. And he's in the process of piloting the coaching center for Lapid Leaders Africa. 
So um, he has worked with various organizations such as the Kenya Tourism Board, Safaricom Limited, Liberty Insurance, and today we are privileged to have him in as he uh, now engages us in a conversation of how do we build those good habits and how do we drop down the habits that hinder us from attaining our success. So we are so much honored to have David with us. Um, maybe David, you can confirm that you can hear us as we hand over the session to you. Hey, thanks, Jake. Um, thank you. Thank you very much for that introduction. Definitely need to get the updated version. Uh, remind me after this, or uh, maybe tomorrow. Um, so that then, uh, yeah, you know what I've done since the last time you got that one. Uh, just great hearing uh, from Jugush. Jugush, some amazing insights. Yani, nimechanuka in the process of just listening to you. And also just thinking through my life. Um, I just turned 42 two days ago. And I thank God for his goodness, his love, his mercy, his favor, and just being here today. Um, so just a bit about myself, just uh, to add some meat to what uh, Jake said. Uh, one is, um, yes, I'm a certified coach. And because I'm so passionate about seeing people become the best versions of themselves, I am a straightforward financial growth coach which means I help people think through their money issues. I am a couples and money coach, which means when you finally join with someone else, or if you're joined to someone else, we can help you figure out your money manenos as a family. Uh, but more than that, I work with business leaders as a consultant and also as a trainer. I'm passionate about how you can be effective. And I thought I, I had figured this thing out until I came to realities with my own habits. And so as we're talking about the, um, today's conversation, I want to share with you something that has become a learning point for me that I believe is going to be a turnaround for many of us. Now, I'll ask uh, Jake that if at any point I start breaking off, let me know so that then I can change service providers uh, just in case. Sawa, sawa? Yeah, yeah. All right, wonderful. So Nikki, prepare for more than two seconds, Jake's new web. Nikki, I'm blink, I'll let you know. Sour, <laughs> sour. All right, wonderful. So I'll be talking about habits are your superpower. And I really like how Nani has started us off, how Jugush has started us off. Habits are your superpower. But I'll finish with they're also your kryptonite. Habits are your superpower. They are also your kryptonite. Right. And when you're thinking about habits, I like the way Jigush started us on the, on the um, definition of habits. And I just thought, let me just put it out there so that then we can have a shared understanding of what habits are. And you may already know, I like knowledge, I like information. And so I like to share information I have because I believe information is power. And uh, when you have information, then you can take some useful decisions. So a habit is a routine of behavior that is repeated, repeated regularly and tends to occur subconsciously. So when Jugusha Naongia Jia Kierere, it's because he's reached, he reached a point where sometimes he doesn't even think about it. It just happens. It just comes out. And this is what a habit is, a behavior that is repeated regularly and tends to occur subconsciously. The American Journal of Psychology defined a habit from the standpoint of psychology as a more or less fixed way of thinking, willing, or feeling acquired through previous repetition of a mental experience. So that's setting it out there about a habit. Basically what this says to us is that there are times when we choose our habits, but many times by the time it's becoming a habit, it moves into the subconscious. And many times you're not asking for a point of choice, it's just happening. You. Now, I came to terms with this reality. As we're thinking about assessing our current habits, Jigusha has taken us through some of the great habits that he has as a person, but he's also mentioned some of the habits that didn't quite work for him the way he would have wanted. And maybe this is a great place to say that if you have any questions, as we go, because time uh, is of the essence. By the way, Jakes, do I still have uh, 30 minutes or do I now have much less? 
let let me post that for you right away. All right, wonderful, great. So, habits. When you look at your current habits, there are many good habits that we have. However, there are many habits that are not working in our favor. They're not working in our favor, not working for us. They are not helping us move forward. And that's why I came up with, they can also be your kryptonite. They can be your superpower, but they can be your kryptonite. Now, some of the habits that have been my superpowers have been timekeeping. I like keeping time. You invite me somewhere, I'll be there before time. Um, I like to engage people. When I'm in a space, I like to engage people and talk to people. I like reading. Um, I like serving people, just being there for people. Um, those have been some of the good habits. I like dreaming big. Um, those have been some of the good habits. But then there have been some, and taking chances, of course. But then there have been some not so good habits. For example, saying yes to everything and not saying no. Procrastinating. Talking big and delivering little. Um, trusting everyone, um, inconsistency. These have been some habits that haven't worked for me and they have cost me many great opportunities. As I listen to some of the things that uh, Jugusha Mefanya, I'm like, hey, a guy, you've actually made a difference by just going for some of the stuff. I, for example, have a brother who is a musician and you probably know him. Um, and he's done so well for himself in music, yet he says, I inspired his music. He's done well for himself in music. He says, I inspired him in music. And he basically says that because of what he saw me do in the music space, he had to become a musician. Today, he earns a living from music. As we think about this thing, we need to ask ourselves, the habits that we've kept, the habits that we've kept, or the habits that we are engaging in, helping us or bringing us down? They are superpower or are they kryptonite? And we, also, we all have maybe had a chance to see what kryptonite does to Superman. So he's strong can go through walls, he can push a plane, he can do many things. But when he's around kryptonite, even a finger can put him down. Aristotle put out a quote and said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not just an act, it's a habit. How many of us desire some great things? Are you achieving those great things? For you to achieve them, you need to form habits that, habits of excellence or habits that get you there. Now we're talking about being Lapid leaders. And for those that are new to Lapid leaders, we, we, we are a community of people that believe that Africa can be better. And so my being here, my taking time to be here, because I believe in you. The question is, do you believe in you? Let's hope I can see it's finally landed. Eh? <laughs> so we are, what we repeatedly do, excellence is not an act, but a habit. That was declared by Aristotle. Ladies and gentlemen, I came face to face with this reality when in 2021, Money was running out. We did not have any contracts coming through. We had some promises of contracts coming through, but we did not know when they were going to come. And I panicked. Because like Jugush, I knew what poverty looked like. I knew how not having finances can feel and look. And I was not imagining that we were heading back there. And I remember asking myself or asking God, what is it? Why does this seem like a cycle that keeps coming back to me? And I remember having gone into depression some time back because of not having the finances I need. As a married man, kids, we're having kids, just having responsibility as a firstborn in my family. I was really 
concerned about what was going on. And I remember thinking to myself, how do we turn this thing around? And around that time, my wife shared with me a video of a gentleman who recommended a, another video, by the way, on YouTube by a gentleman called Al Nightingale. So the, vid the video she shared with me was of, of Joshua Salman and Joshua Salman had shared in his preaching a video about Al Nightingale. And the video was about the formula for success. And one of the things that Al Nightingale began by saying, he's of course talked about, he's done a video, he's done a recording known as The Secret, which has been said to be one of the videos that has challenged many people's lives. Okay, so the, he talks about the strangest secret and he said that the strangest secret is that as a person thinks, as a man or woman thinks, so they are. And that's habit number one. Create habit, a habit of positive thinking. If you're constantly thinking about how things can't work, how things are terrible, things are bad, it's always a problem. If that is the habit that you have created, then you can be assured you're not going to amount to much because you have already decided that you cannot amount to much. And this is regardless of your background. Are you a person who's thinking progressively or thinking big? Because as a person thinks, so they are. Because what you think comes from inside of you. What you think comes from you deciding that this is it. The person thinks, so they are. So that's where Al Nightingale begins. So when I, watch, when I listen to the formula for success, one, it was a lifeline for me because it made me question a lot of my habits. And there's one of the things that he said the first thing that he says, he talks about checklist. And in the formulas for success, he talks about the checklist. And this checklist, he says, whenever a pilot is taking off, they have a habit of going through a checklist of certain things that they must confirm before the plane takes off. And they have got to go through a similar checklist before they land. And that is why flying is probably one of the safest modes of transport yet. Why? Because of those checklists. Any pilot who succeeds must have a habit, regardless of how experienced they are, of going through their checklist. And so Al Nightingale said, even for our lives, we must have a checklist that we go through every morning and every evening. And this is where he starts. He begins, he says the checklist has three things. It has a formula it has a gold mine and it has a word. And it begins with a formula. He says the formula is this, that our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to our contribution, our service. I'll repeat that again. Our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to our contribution, our service. As Jigush was telling his story, I couldn't help but think this guy has contributed something. But as long as he was contributing, rewards found him. Many times we say, oh, I need to see the reward first before I can contribute. I submit to you today that you need to contribute first before we can reward you. You need to contribute something. You need to bring something before we can begin to see the value of what you're bringing. Whether that is tailored to the problem we are facing, whether that is tailored to the, to the, to the need that we have, you must contribute something. What we give you back, whether it is money, position, authority, leadership, is a reward of that contribution. So as a lapid leader, you must begin to solve problems in Africa, African problems, everyday problems in your surrounding, in your home, in your neighborhood, in your family, before we can start trusting you with the responsibility to lead us to another place. So our rewards in life always be in exact proportion of contribution. 
Dr. Miles Monroe says that you, you see people looking like they are living well, walk into any wealthy neighborhood, look at the toys, look at where they live, look at the way the roads are made, look at just how beautiful a place is. And right there, you're looking at people who are contributing something of value to society. So our, our, our rewards in life, they always be in exact proportion a contribution, our service. It says beyond that, just to illustrate it a little more, the amount of money you are paid by your clients will always be in direct ratio to the need for what you do, your ability to do it, and the difficulty in replacing you. That is not enough to contribute greatly, but you must be contributing in response to a need. There must be a problem you're solving. There must be a problem you're fixing, you're providing a solution. Is there a need for what you do? And then are you able to do it? And then how difficult is it to replace you? And I submit to you today, guys, that the only way that you remain relevant is if there are fewer people who can do what you do the way you do it. The only way you remain relevant is if there are fewer people that can do what you do the way you do it. Jugush suddenly became an enigma because he was doing something nobody else was doing. He flipped the game around. He decided to go against the grain. Look at him today. I remember when I was leaving one of the top uh, multinationals in this country after only two years of working there. And people are saying, you don't leave this organization. This organization leaves you. But I dared to leave. And today, I have lived a very different life and the impact I've made is significantly different from those that I left there. The kind of conversations I have are different from the guys who chose to stay because this is what the amount of money you're paid by clients will always be in direct ratio to the need for what you do, the ability to do it, and the difficulty in replacing you. So are you looking to change your income levels? Are you looking to change the way you earn? I moved from being paid monthly and sometimes not being sure whether I was going to be paid monthly to being paid daily, to being paid hourly, to being paid when I show up. Need for what you do, your ability to do it, difficulty in replacing you. So the question I want you to answer today is what value are you creating? You want a certain kind of life? You want a certain kind of respect? You want a certain kind of authority, responsibility? What value are you creating? Uh, the great teacher Jesus Christ says that who can trust you with more if you can't be trusted with the little that's already available to you? These issues, handling, the habits that you have can't handle the, the time that's already available to you, the responsibility that's currently available to you. But you're saying, I want to be leader of this sometime. I want to be president of this sometime. I want to be MP, MCA, wherever, whatever it is. I want to work in that organization. Are you trustworthy? Are you creating value where you are right now? Second thing Al Nightingale talks about is the gold mine. And he says in the gold mine, he says, um, the gold mine is your mind. Your mind is powerful, exceedingly powerful. But many of us only use a small part of it. One of my mentors, Brian Tracy, talks about the discipline of clear thinking. Many of us think fuzzily because right now you're thinking about something, but you're listening to me as well. You're thinking about something, but you're also going through your, your, your phone or something like that. Brian Tracy talks about the discipline of clear thinking and he says, set aside some time. If you're facing a challenge or there's something you want to fix, there's a turnaround you want in your life, there's some big decision you need to take. He says, take at least 30 minutes of no distractions, put your phone away, be in a place where there's no noise, be at the park maybe, or uh, go next to some river, but just a place where is your Zen place, a place of quiet. And for 30 minutes, focus on that issue. And he says, in that time, you'll come out with great solutions 
for the challenge that you're facing. A habit of thinking through things. Guys, part of the reason Africa is having trouble solving some of its problems is because we react to stuff. We don't take time to think through stuff. The leaders of the days to come are going to have to be leaders that think before they act, not act and then think later. While there may be some lucky breaks when you do that, the better way is to think and then act or think and then respond. Now, if you're the kind of person that would like to think by writing down, then have a pen. Have a pen, write down what you're thinking through. That helps you clearly uh, think clearly, then write down. If you prefer to talk to someone, then find someone you trust and talk to them about the things you're thinking. It talks about now the last thing here being the word. So we've talked about the formula, we've talked about the gold mine, and we talk about the word. And the word is attitude. Many of us have terrible attitudes and we have a certain, and the attitude really speaks into your approach to life, your approach to work, your approach to the way you do things. Someone once said to me, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. And I remember being very offended with him because he was rebuking me about something. But I've come to realize he was very right. Because if you take things lightly, that's the way you do everything. You take things lightly. It's a habit that you form. You take nothing seriously. And sometimes as young people, we pride ourselves in not taking life too seriously. Guys, you have one life. It's true, you only live once. How about you live it seriously as in? Whatever you're doing, do it with commitment, with seriousness, whether it's fun, or it's work, whether it's play or it's work, do it to the fullest. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. So how then do we talk about creating the right kind of habit? A few months back, I stumbled upon the book, a book that had probably been in my circles for very long. And this is the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Al Nightingale, not by, by Stephen Covey, sorry. And if you haven't read it, please find it. If you have read it, please find the 30th anniversary edition. If you're reading it for the first time, the 30th anniversary edition is a great one to read because they've now added things that they learned over the years. And it talks about seven habits that we need to take up if we intend to make a difference in our lives and in our society. And it begins by saying, be proactive. You, my friends, are in church. You choose the scripts by which you live your life. Many of us are in the habit of reacting to things. We don't take anything deliberately. Now, guys, I've been looking for answers to some of the challenges I was facing in life. I've been looking to answers to some of the difficulties I was seeing. I didn't realize that the answers were right there in front of me. My habits were killing my opportunities. My negative habits or my bad habits were standing in the way of my progress. I don't know if you found yourself in that place where everyone tells you, hey, you can be a big deal. You're a big deal. You're a big thing. But you always look at your life and you're like, hey, you don't know my story. And with this book or with these seven habits, I began to find answers. Don't wait for things to happen. The world is looking for people who make things happen. Leaders are the people who make things happen happen. So be proactive. Recognize that the responsibility is yours. What is responsibility? The ability to respond. Don't let things happen to you. Make things happen. 
That's not to say that life ceases to happen. Life will still happen, but you determine how you respond. So be proactive. Is our willing permission a consent to what happens to us? It's, it's, it's a willing permission, our consent to what happens to us, that that's us far more than what happened. Maybe somebody needs to mute. You decide how you deal with the issues that come your way. Be proactive. Things happen. Number two is begin with the end in mind. Begin with the end in mind. Many times we are just going through life. The challenge I have for you is take time. Think through where do you want to go with this thing? What does the end look like? Where do you want to take it? So start with a clear destination. Don't just go along with things. Ask yourself, is this connected to where I want to go? And then align yourself. I want to go through this very quickly. First things first. Prioritize your day. One of the things I learned recently is don't go with a day-to-day -day plan. Go with a weekly plan. The world was created in seven days, six days, and then God rested on the seventh. So work with a weekly plan because that way you can see clearly the big rocks in your week as opposed to waking up today and then deciding what it, was, it is you're going to do, do today. So prioritize your actions. Put fast things fast. And the things that go fast are the things that are moving you towards your goal. Think win-win. In any situation you find yourself, don't seek to win by yourself. As you win, let the other person win. Then we all win. But not that you're just letting them win because that's a win-lose where you're choosing to lose but you're finding a place where everyone feels that there has been fairness, there has been agreement, there has been alignment. Pursue win-win situations. Number five is seek first to understand and then to be understood. Many times we respond to things before we even know what is being said. Many times we listen with the intent to respond. Seeking to understand means you listen first. Then when you've understood where the other person is coming from, then you can help them understand where you're coming from. Number six, synergize. None of us has everything we need to achieve our purposes on this earth. Yet in us, is equipped, is we're equipped with everything to take care of our needs. However, we need others to achieve the big dreams and the big goals that God has put inside of us. So work with other people. Seek people with whom you're aligned, not people that are like you, but people with whom you're aligned who complement your strengths and your capacities. Last but not least, Sharpen the soul. Constantly improve yourself, renew yourself, learn, grow, improve yourself. Physically, spiritually, mentally, and socially. Gain knowledge, work out, spend time with God, and spend time with other people. Constantly growing, constantly learning. The continuous renewal allows us to increase our ability to practice each habit. As you continue your journey of success, may this find value in your life as you consider which habits are moving you forward and which habits are taking you back. I want to stop there and uh, Maybe take a few questions, if any, and then maybe give it back to Jake or uh, Linda to guide us into the next space.
Any questions? Or any that I might have missed that were there in the beginning? David, I think that you just um, took everyone away with you know those words. People are just resonating with what you said. People are reflecting on those habits they've been doing. And people are trying to do a, a 360 turn right now. So guys, let's ask him when we have him. This is a very important resource. Don't be shy. Wambui, Wambui Tiongo, kindly unmute and ask your question. Feel free. Hello, David. Thank you for the wonderful words. I've learned quite a lot. So I have two questions. The first one be, at times you start good habits and then it gets to a point where you like, you're getting overwhelmed. Practicing, yeah. practicing what you, uh, these good habits that you're trying to inculcate in your life. The second question is, and it's a bit controversial. Yeah. You talked about your coach, and what from what I've heard, it's mostly about finances. So my question is, is it really that every habit that we have to create nowadays has to be focused towards financial goals to a point that you forget about the other parts of life that still have to exist and you have to create a balance. Thank you very much for that question, my boy. So to your question number one, uh, getting overwhelmed. Remember that your habits have come from years of practice or months of practice. That means, remember we talked about them being subconscious. It means they've reached a place where they're almost second nature to you. Giving up a habit is not as easy as said. And it takes some real determination, commitment, consistency to actually change a habit. And so it begins by, and one of the things that even um, Stephen Covey confesses is that it's, it's, it's not about waking up in the morning and saying, today I've changed my habits. Part of it may require some deep thinking about what habit do you want to acquire? What is it you want to change? What is it you want to move into? The reason I went into coaching is because I had many people that were asking me to mentor them when I started training. And some of them were much older than I was. And I would wonder, so how, where do I even start from? You're an expert in what you do. Um, I don't know how, how to help in the area that you're in. And I remember finding coaching as a response to that. I normally go through a session just walking people through coaching. So I'm not just a financial coach. Financial is one of those things that I do because finance is critical to operating on this planet. Okay? Somewhere else, maybe we wouldn't need it. But it's critical to operating on this planet because it's a mode of exchange. It's, it's, it's a measure of value for, for us on this planet. And so that's why, why, why part of the reason that I found myself heading in that direction of helping equip people with finance. Because one of the things that challenges people is them understanding why when they're struggling with finance, then they can't think about anything else. So understand that it's difficult to change goals. So it takes time and it takes commitment because you're, it's like uprooting a nail or uprooting a tooth that has been growing for a while. It's like trying to uproot a tree that has been growing in a certain space for a while. So the reason you'll struggle or you get overwhelmed, one, is if you're trying to, to break the rules of adapting that new habit. For example, uh, Jukush, I think, talked about exercise. Um, if you do exercise and you don't do it regularly enough, and by regularly, I don't necessarily meet, mean daily, you will struggle with keeping the exercise regime. If you do an exercise or if you choose to do exercise and you begin with by doing it for three hours, you're taking two big chunks. The chunks, the, the chunks that you're taking are too big for you to be able to sustain it. So part of the reason people struggle is that whatever approach they've taken towards changing their habit is not sustainable. Then there was a second one about habits and goals. Um, I think that's the one you're talking about finance. Not all habits are, about, are around finance. Not all habits are around finance. However, the quality or the kind of habits that you're keeping could be significantly if affecting your, the kind of rewards or the kind of um, remuneration that you're getting. The difference between the person who's 
being celebrated, who's growing in their career, who's moving to new levels, who's even being celebrated in authority, boils down to the habits that they've set. So it's not necessarily just money, but money being a measure of value plays a critical role in celebrating the good habits that you have. And that's a conversation that we can have deeper as we go along. Thank you so much. It was very insightful. You're welcome. Um, so I, I'm trying to go in order here. Gikuru, the process of creating habits, there are times you remain still, like your mind goes on shuts down. How do you deal with this? Yeah, like your mind goes on shuts down on continuing with the habit. I think Kikuru have responded to that in my response to Amboy. Um, but many times if you take on a habit too big or if you take on habits, um, you, you, because what you want to do is as you're changing your habits, go in bite-sized pieces. Don't go big at, our, at once. Sometimes we try to do a complete 180 turn. It's not as easy as that. Um, if you've been, for example, if you've had a habit of smoking, let's use smoking, for example, the withdrawal or, or, or you've been on drugs, the withdrawal symptoms are so rough that they could kill you. And similarly, changing some of these negative habits that we've built over time, it's a process. It's a process. So it's about working with someone who can just help you. And sometimes that's why a coach comes in handy in just helping you navigate. For some people, you can do cold turkey, turn around and move. For some people, you may need to take time to work on your habits. Arukia, you had a question? I see your hand. Arukia, you had raised your hand and now I can't see it. I thought you wanted to ask a question. So Thanji uh, Zita asked, how do I know the difference between mental disorders such as anxiety, PTSD, or OCD, and do I say habits? Okay, uh, for this, you may require a bit of an in-depth conversation with a therapist or a counselor, but also um, just by doing some research, you can see the difference between PTSD. We normally call Uncle Google or University of Google. You can just uh, study the difference between PTSD, OCD, um, and habits. I think I gave the definition of habits, um, so you can have an in-depth understanding of that. And then if you want to, to be checked whether what you're, you're going through, what you're struggling with, are actually just habits that you've created, or they're part of um, conditions or disorders, then you can see a therapist or an expert in that area to just do for you a diagnosis and help know where you're at. Right, I see some words there from K Main. I really appreciate for creating time with us as a leader. How do you create a boundary between friendship and professionalism? I mean, you get promoted in your workplace and then your colleagues now have to report to you. Do you have to change your habits? With responsibility. Yes, yes, yes um, I request you take that one as the final question. Uh, it's still a very good one to finalize with. I need also addressing. Wonderful. Thanks for that, Linda. Thank you for managing us so well. With responsibility, um, or we, we call it with um, with right come responsibility, and with with uh, increased responsibility come increasing demands on how you behave. For example, um, president can behave in a certain way when they are not president. But the, when they occupy the office of president, then even the things that they would say them as a person can do, the office does not allow them to do. And sometimes it's a very difficult balance for somebody who's getting promoted because you've grown up with these people. You've, you've, um, you've been part of them especially if you're being picked out from people that you, you've been working with, you've been part of the same community, you probably used to gossip about the management together. Now that you've entered a new league and probably should speak about how to engage before you get into that position. Now that you've entered a new league, there'll be certain demands about the way you speak, 
about the things you can speak about, about the, the, the things you can comment about, certain things are going to change. Now, you can, some, some people will remain as your friends, but that doesn't change that your responsibility has changed and that they still need to report to you as, um, as, your, as your team members. So you need to make that clear to your team that certain things are gonna change. Now, you also need to draw the line between your professional space and your, your, your friendship space. Some people will automatically drop out of, of your space because now you're not in the same league. But then some people, because of the value of the friendship that you've built, the true friendship that you built will stay along with you. Now, the honors is on you as the person who's moved to the next level to continue to cultivate those relationships because these people can become great influencers in helping you manage the rest of the team, in helping you manage the other people that are at the same level as them. So you want to cultivate those friendships. And we always say in leadership, you need, or even as in, in, in personal leadership, even before you get into positions, you must always have people at several levels. One, you must always have people above you, people that you look up to, people that you're learning from, people that speak into your life, people that speak with authority over you, people that can hold you accountable. Number two, you must have people at the same level, people that keep you in check, people that remind you that uh, as much as you've grown, there are these guys are your peeps. They are your peers. You exchange notes among them. You can be vulnerable. You can be yourself. These are people at the same level as you. Then there must be people down below you. These are people whom you're speaking into their lives. You're mentoring them. You're giving to them. Whatever you're learning from above, whatever you're learning from your current reality, you're passing on to them. You're raising them up to the next level. So when you, if you have people at all those levels, you'll find you're a very balanced person because sometimes the friendships die, not because the people didn't want to be your friends, but because you became too big for them. You're no longer available to them. You're no longer accessible. So that's how I would answer that. Great, amazing questions. Our time is up. Uh, thank you so much for the engagements. I can see there's some readers among us. Um, Damaris, I saw you, um, Rukia, and your engagement, and just everyone else that was engaging. Thank you so much. Really appreciate this opportunity and looking forward to connecting with you in the days to come. Back to you, Linda. Amazing, amazing, David. Um, I don't think the information that people are gathering here, the people realize how invaluable it is and how important it is for us to have this conversation within our capacities. And we do appreciate you, we appreciate you taking your time and we have surely drunk from your cup. Thank you so much. Okay, you, uh, at this point, I think um, we'd also just like to thank both of you, acknowledge Njukosh, acknowledge David for being with us this lovely evening and just more about Lapid Leaders. This is actually what we are trying to do here in Kenya and Africa at large. We're trying to empower the next generation of leaders. And our September intake is actually ongoing and we do encourage you to apply. As you have seen on the chat box, we have been sharing the application links and we encourage you to join Lapid. We have a, we have a September intake and it is going to be this and more and more. You're going to feel uncomfortable. You're going to feel etched to do more and you're definitely going to make an impact in your network. So I'll invite Jakes to give the final remarks and this is it from my end. I thank you all for joining and have a lovely rest of your evening. Well, thank you so much, Linda, for taking us through that part of the session. Um, we appreciate that and to David, our life coach, thank you so much for um, the wisdom that you've poured on us. It's been a pleasure for us to sit at your feet and just learn from you, um, learn from your experiences. And as Linda has mentioned it, to also tap from your cup. Um, I also take this opportunity to thank Jugush. Um, in absentia, he had to drop off at some point, um, but our regards to all of you. 
Um, and maybe also take this opportunity to thank each and every one of us, the LAPID team for planning this um, quite enlightening and insightful um, session. And um, to each and every individual who has been able to attend, we hope that this webinar has enabled you uh, to just learn how to create habits that will elevate you to the next level. And this is by helping you um, assess habits that you, are, you currently have and how they impact your life. I'm helping you just learn how to create habits that are aligned with your personal and career goals and also to manage those habits and create realistic attainable goals. Um, and also to just give you encouragement um, that the, hab the four habits that you might be struggling with, um, it's possible to just drop them off. And for more of this, please keep tuned. Um, also take part um, or, or maybe apply for the uh, September intake, as Linda has mentioned. We'll be having more of this as we proceed. So um, keep tuned to us. So um, maybe just to pass by the chat box to receive two comments and then we close. And I can see um, Emmanuel saying that thanks much. Carried a lot from this engaging session. Um, hope for many more. Thanks so much, David at um, and at Mjugush. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. We'll actually, be having more of this, and I'm doing this to also give you a moment to, um, if you're interested or maybe you would want to have more of this, to also click on the link that has been shared on the chat box. So I'll pass by two more comments, um, just to make sure that you you don't miss out on the link, um, on the chat box. Thank you so much, Grace. When I can see your comment, at that, um, thank you, David. I've really learned a lot. Thank you. Um, Jugush also. Lorraine Charotich, I can see your feedback. Thanks a lot, David and Jugush, for giving us a lot of insight on habits, good, and how we can adapt them to propel us to being better people. Um, thank you so much, Kikuro. I can see your feedback as well, saying that thank you, great mentor. Um, Jackie, I can see your feedback. Thank you so much. Learned a lot from Jugush and David. It was an engaging session. Thank you so much, David, um, for keeping it so live. All right, so um, we will bring it to a close here, but someone is telling me that there are more feedbacks on chat books. We've, we've been um, live on Facebook, so someone is just requesting me to just pass by, and I'll do that to Onata. Um, and I can see um, quite a number of feedback from there. Um, Lynette Orito, we have seen you following um, as a young man, Moses Mwangi is saying that um, um, he would want to maybe um, learn more on how to build um, habits. And I believe that this session has helped you just to catch that. Um, and I can see Manu Onyango saying that a bit interesting and um, he was really looking forward to hear more of the story. I can see that as well. And I am so much glad that you have been following us both on YouTube, actually on YouTube, on Facebook, and in this session as well. Thank you so much. Um, at this point, uh, we will pray as we close, and I have the honors to do the prayers, so uh, let's all bow down as we pray. Thank you, Lord, for giving us such an insightful session. Uh, we think thank you that you've um, enabled us to learn from Jugush and David and also from each other, oh God, of the habits that if we create and work on, oh God, we will become better people, king of all glory. And then that them that we need to drop, my master, we pray that you may help us, king of all glory, to not just have this conversation and leave it at it, but to take it higher, king of all kings, to just um, take the lessons and implement them in our lives, oh God. As we depart from this session, we pray that you may be with us watch over asking of all glory or for the glory and honor of your name. Thank you because of all the participants that have been part of this session. I pray that we bless them as well. We worship you and we give you glory. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much Amen. everybody for taking your time Amen. to be able to join, to join us for this webinar. We hope to see you um, in the flagship program and also in our upcoming webinars. Be on the lookout. We'll be posting more on when our next webinar will be. Um, but in the meantime, make sure that you uh, you um, just uh, take some moment to the September intake. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Good night too. Good night. Thank you, Jakes. It's been great hanging with, out with you guys. Good night. Thank you so much, David. We appreciate that. Feedback. Forever grateful. Asante, Nisana.
Korea, I see good you. Adios. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Audrey. Good night. Um, thank you, Wamboy, for being part of us today. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Martha. Thank you, Josphat, Dennis Kubania, Imana Lanyango, Faith Mayo, George, Grace Joanne, Josphat, Judy Wangare. Thank you so much. Doreen, I see you. Thank you so much and good night. Thank you so much, Lee. I'm lucky, Patricia. We so much appreciate. Thank you so much, Lynn Muthoni, for being part of this session. Martha Juguna, we appreciate you so much. Thank you, Maximilian. We see you there. Asante Sana Celestine. Thank you so much, Pauline. Ruga Lewis, we so much. Thank you. Um, and to each and every one of us, Asante Nisana, for being part of this session. Have a very good night. Santi Martha, thank you. From all of us at Lapid, we end it at that. Until next time. Bye bye.